Okay, so we have the recording on for the benefit of those who are not here or not here yet. Bokatov, everybody, welcome back. Uh, thank you for your patience. We've had a little bit of a Bokatov. break. Bokatov. We've had a little bit of a break through to Shavuot and then I was away. So, but now we are now we are back in it. So we're on the Gemara Masechat Beit Sadaf Yud Dalit Amud Bet. We got to the top of Amud Bet. There was a little bit of a discussion here in terms of crushing, uh, grinding on Yom Tov. We saw that Tchina that essentially is uh, one of those menachot which we would not allow for Ochel Nefesh because it's generally done earlier in the process, done in the field, done for many days, uh, with certain exceptions, certain formats of a shinoi. The Gemara here had a discussion about a machteshet ktana versus a machteshet gdola, what may or may not be allowed. So if you have a look, if you've done it on the bed, at the top, very top of the Amud, it says, okay, so it says, Rav Papi, Ikla Levei Mar Shmuel, Aitilei Daisa, Velo Achil. Interesting, you, you, you find occasionally these cases in the Gemara, uh, of certain uh, Amoraim came to certain places, didn't want to eat, etc., in order to teach us. So here yeah, it says, Rafabi came to the place of Marshmoel. They brought in this dice, this was obviously on Yom Tov, and he didn't eat it. He didn't eat it. Why? Because it had been prepared on Yom Tov, and he felt that it was uh, that it was forbidden. So maybe it was, we said, if it was a Makhteshet Ktana that's done, that's in a way, and so the Shino, and that would have been allowed. So maybe they made it that way. No, the answer is the chazei dava daik tve. He saw that it was very, very fine, very, very, very uh, thin, and had been ground up, and therefore it, it, it was not allowed. For Dilma made moavdua. So maybe they prepared it yesterday. Maybe they prepared it on erev yom tov. The chazei dala kalaf tzahale. So he saw that uh, from from the appearance and the way that it looked, it was just uh, the, the the grains were sort of white. Um, and therefore, he knew that it was uh, that it had only recently been been uh, crushed up. Right, Rashi says, "So my toya kaluf lavan was peeled and it was white, and that was a sign that it was uh, had only just been done." Vibai day mashani be marshmallow, or alternatively, it was different in the house of marshmallow because the ika pritzuta the avde there were avadim there who were not so scrupulous in terms of uh, what they were meant to do. And they therefore had no issue of uh, transgressing Yom Tov in this way. Okay, so that's that concludes that. We now get on to we now get on to the next Mishnah, and the topic of our next Mishnah is going to be Borer. So we're working out the way through different Melachot. As we said, Borer is the Melacha of sorting, selecting. That is uh, here. Th this is an interesting one. As we've said many times, Melachet Ochan Nefesh on Yom Tov is going to be permitted. Melachot, which are part of food preparation, which on Shabbat are absolutely forbidden, part of the 39 Melachot, cooking being a case in point, on Yom Tov is going to be mutar. However, it's only those Melachot which are done in a way that it's uh, for that day. Cooking is done for the day of Yom Tov. Not, uh, you know, there's no license now on Yom Tov to go and do a cooking for the next six months because they put everything in the freezer because now you have the day off and spend the day cooking. No, you're allowed to cook for the day. If you have leftovers, you're still allowed to eat them. But you're not allowed to cook with the intent of that being for um, for uh, beyond Yom Tov. And therefore, those malachot, which are the, the way that they are done is that they are done for many days done in large quantities, even though that's part of Ochan Nefesh, that is not allowed. Now, Borer is when we find something interesting, where we find there's a type of Borer which is done in the field, right, with the wheat, and there's a type of Borer which is done at home in the kitchen. If it's done for many, many days, it's not. It's going to be forbidden. But if it's done uh, just as part of the way that we are eating and part of convenience, that's going to be allowed on your Tov. We're going to see exactly the parameters now. And this is going to be a Machloket. Three-way Machloket in the Mishnah. Just before we get into that, let's remind ourselves. On Shabbat, the Gemara Masechet Shabbat talks about three conditions whereby Borer is not called Borer, but it's called Derech Achila. And there it's going to be permitted on Shabbat even. So on Shabbat, if you're sorting, right, you have a salad in front of you, or you're eating chicken off the bone, or whatever it is, these are Ma'asim B'chol Yom, right, how are you going to eat it? How are you going to eat in a way that is not considered all wet? It comes up with peeling vegetables, comes up with washing vegetables, 
Borer is a very, very, very common uh, melacha. And again, so there are three conditions. If one chooses ochel mitoch psolet, that's going to be important because that's going to be our topic now. But if you have in front of you either food and waste, right? So there's food on the bone or whatever it is. Or even if, according to most poskim, there are two types of food. I have, uh, I don't know, apples and oranges, whatever it is. And I only want one, but not the other. I have raisins and nuts. I want the nuts, but not the raisins, okay? So then condition number one is I have to take ochel mitok psolet. I have to take out that which I want and not remove that which I don't want. Number two is that it has to be la alta, meaning it has to be for immediate use, immediate consumption. And number three is that it has to be bayad velo bakli. It has to be with your hand and not with a uh, utensil, a utensil that is specialized for sorting. A knife and a fork are not considered a utensil in the sense, they're considered an extension of one's hand. So those are the three conditions that we need. Lacking any one of those conditions, it's going to be forbidden. That's on Shabbat. Okay. Most important thing is that it, we are always selecting ochel mitoch psolet. We say if you're selecting psolet mitoch ochel, you're selecting the waste and putting it aside. So that is selecting. But if you're taking the food and you're not putting it aside, but you're taking the food to eat and you're leaving the waste behind, so that would be permitted because that is derech achila. That's how it is on Shabbat. So now, so there's the Mishnah. We're on Daf Yudalit Amud Bet. We are about six lines down from the top. The first Mishnah on the page is about four different Mishnah on this page, or three. The first one, we say as follows. Haborer kitniot beyomtov. Okay, so a person is coming to sort a kitniot on yomtov. Beit Shammai omrim borer ochel veochel. Ubeit Hillel omrim borer kedalko. Becheko bekanon avotam choya valob tavla valob napa valob akvola. Okay, so first, first of all, we have a machloket ya beit shemay beit hilal. We'll see a third opinion soon, but beit shemay beit hilal as follows: beit shemay says bore vochel, bore ochel vochel. In other words, exactly the same as Shabbat. You can take the food away, you can take the food away from the psolet, the food from the waste, and then you can eat. In fact, that's the same language that the Gemara uses in Masechet Shabbat. Now beit hilal say no. Beit hilal remember kedal kol. We'll see in the Gemara exactly what beit hilal means, but beit hilal says you can, in fact. You're allowed to sort. You're doing this so that you can eat the food. So that's fine. Well, I could have gone the ordinary way. Okay, different uh, different ways that you would uh, that you would uh, separate different uh, sort of uh, large like a tamchoy, for example, is like a large bowl. The different uh, things that you would use in order to in order to sort your food. But even when Hillel agrees that avalobat avla avalobat apa avalobak fella. Right, different types of uh, sieves and, uh, and 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 filters, right, which you cannot use because these are implements which are used in order to uh, to sort for many days, sort for a long period, and that would also be forbidden. But the chiddush is that ordinarily, what we think of as borer, right, but Hillel says that is going to be allowed. Now, Rabban Gamliel Omer, af mediach v'shole. Okay, so Rabban Gamliel says. You can mediach, says Rashi, mediach b'mayim, in water. You can put the whole thing in, in so, so there are different ways to sort. You can go through it by hand. You can go through, put it through a sieve or a strainer or something like that. Or you can put all these kidney you can put them into a bowl of water. And then the, uh, either the, uh, depending on what, the kidney themselves or the dirt, whatever, will float to the top. And then you can strain that off. And then you can, uh, and then you have left the food which you can eat. So that's what Rabban Gamliel says. Af mediach v'shole, that would also be that would also be permitted. Says Rashi v'shole mafarish begmarah shole psolet shetzaf lemala. You're going to strain off the waste which floats to the top. Kumo mishne shle b'chaviot. Then you have mishne tel chel tsanim atzofim al piach chaviot. Right, you take these uh, seeds and things which uh, float onto the top of the barrels, the dregs. You take them, uh, you strain them off in that way. Now there is a bit of a discussion of Yehan Rishonim. Meiri and others just point out because Rabban Gamliel says Af Madiach B'Shole. It sounds like from the language of the Gemara that Rabban Gamliel is the most lenient opinion. I there's clearly Beit Shammai, which is the most stringent. Beit Shammai says you can't do Borer on Yom Tov; you just do the ordinary way. Then we have Beit Hillel, who says you can do Borer Kedar Kol B'Chekol B'Kanon B'Tam Choy, but not B'Tavla, but not B'Napa, but not B'Kvala. And Rabban Gamliel says Af Madiach B'Shole. You can even go and you can and strain it now. Uh, the reason why the, the mayor asked the following question here, he says, "What Beit Hillel says, what's easier? What's more? What's more tircha? What's less tircha?" Uh, Rabban Gamliel's method, whereby 
you just put it all in water, you let the waste straight, go to the top and you strain it off. Or you're actually going and you're sorting, you have a large bowl and you're going through and you're sorting things one by one. So uh, so he says that actually Rabban Gamliel's method is less, since it's less tircha, it's less bother, therefore Rabban Gamliel is actually not more, uh, uh, meaning he understands that Beit Hillel would even agree with that. That when Beit Hillel, so the area is different, Kirsa. He says, "Beit Hillel Orim Borak Dal Kol B'Chay Kol B'Kanav Tam Chore." Right? Lo B'Naf Lo B'Tavla Na Bab Lo B'Rek Tora. Rabban Gamliel Omer Madiach V'Sholem. He omits the word Af. In other words, according to that opinion, Rabban Gamliel would say you can strain it and you can get the food out that way, but you can't go and do Bore, which involves an actual Tircha. Okay, so that would put Rabban Gamliel in between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel. Other Rishonim say no. Rabban Gamliel is the most lenient. He's adding on another method which Beit Hillel would not allow. Okay. Either way, that is the uh, that is the three way machloket that we have in our Mishnah. So says the Gemara, Tanya, Amara Ban Gamliel, Bamed Varim Amurim. Okay. When Beit Shammai went now now when Beit Hillel says when Beit Hillel says that you can bore in the normal way, you can take the waste aside and, and you can set that aside. Rashi says, Bamed Varim Amurim, the Shara Beit Hillel it up solid mamash rashlich. The Beit Hillel allow you. To take away the psolet and throw it away. Okay. Says Rabban Gamliel, but made from Amorim. That is when you have more food than waste, right? In your mixture. In other words, what we're trying to get to the whole time is we're allowing the method of Borea, which is the least tircha. Okay. On Shabbat, even if it's more tircha for me to remove the food from the waste than the waste from the food. Right, let's say I have a bowl with uh, food and some nuts and some shells, okay? So there's a few, so there's just a few shells in the bowl. So on Shabbat, if I want to eat it, I'm not allowed to go in to take the shells from the bowl and throw them away. It's completely forbidden. That's bore. If I take the nuts, I pick up the nut that I want and I eat it, that's okay. But now if, you, if I have a bowl, which is the majority of nuts, and it would actually be easy every time I have to look and I have to see, make sure I'm taking a nut, not taking a shell. It would actually be much easier for me to just take the shells and throw them away. Okay, that was less tircha. So on Shabbat, you still can't do that because that is derech breira and it's not derech achila. But yeah, Beit Hillel is telling me that if this is the case on Yom Tov, that would be permitted, right? When Beit Hillel said that you can borek it al kol, you can take away the... Uh, you can take away the psolet. They're not talking about a case. Let's say I had a bowl full of shells and there were just a couple of nuts in it. So then it's much easier to just pick up the nuts and eat them. So there, Beit Hillel would agree. But Hillel aren't going to tell me, I oh, have to go. No, no, no. You have to take all the shells and throw them away until you're left with the nuts. No. Um, so that's what he says. What is it when Beit Hillel said you're allowed to and you can, you can go and you uh, take away the psolet, you can burn in that way. What were they dealing What What are we dealing with? When the you, I have more food than waste in the bowl, in the plate, and whatever in front of me. Okay, that makes sense. Therefore, it's less tircha. Psolet rabela ochel. Psolet rabela ochel. Divra kol notel da ochel umaniachet psolet. So says Rabban Gamliel. No, if you have the majority, right? Let's say I have a bowl and it's more shells than nuts. Right, the psalm of Bella Ocha, then everyone will agree, I both paid Hillel and Beit Shammai, that noteret a ochel umaniachet a psalm, that in that case, I need to just, uh, I, I, in that case, I can just take the food and leave the leave the psalm. The leniency would not apply to that because it's actually not not a leniency, it's a stringency. So now it says, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Psalm of Bella ochel mika mandashali. So if I have him. I have in the container in front of me. I have majority of psolet. I have more psolet than ochel. Is anyone going to allow that? Why? What's the problem? So have a look at Rashi. Rashi says, "Me command the I feel let out the law. Never mind borer. Here I have a bigger problem. Am I even allowed to carry it? We have a principle throughout the Torah." That the minority is uh, the minority is a uh, batel is nullified or is secondary to the majority. So if I have a bowl which uh, if I have a bowl which is which is the majority psolet and not ochel, so the entire thing is going to be mukta. I thought I asked me a question the other day. I said, what if you if you want to pick something up, 
Okay, so you have something uh, which has, let's say it has a mukta object on it. You have a, a, something, a shelf or whatever it is with toys and the mukta toys are on it. Are you allowed, are you allowed to pick it up? It's a very, very good question. So it depends. It depends. That's what in an anachot of mukta you have, we have. One of the types of mukta is what's called a basis, which is a base for something, right? So if I have a basis, the varasul, the classic case that's brought in the poskim is if I have a tray which has the candlesticks on top. Right, so the candles themselves are mukta. There's nothing you can do with a candle. Okay, we're talking about that would be on Shabbat. On Yom Tov, you can light candles, so the candles themselves will not be mukta. But on Shabbat, the candles are mukta. And since the candles are on the tray, the tray also becomes mukta because it's a basis la davar asur. However, if it's a basis la davar mutar, or it's a basis la davar asur vim mutar, if I, have a, uh, if I have a forbidden object, a mukta item, and a non mukta item together on the tray, then it would be okay. So that's, so that's what I say. You have the tray with the uh, with the uh, candlesticks. You place the chalot on that before Shabbat. Then the tray is no longer a basis of Asu, but it's a basis of Asu Vamuta. Then we get into discussions. If it's just one of one of each object, which is more significant? If the uh, if the mukta item is much more significant than the non mukta item, so then it's a question. So this comes up all the time. You have draw a drawer or a shelf uh, or something like that. That would be a basis. So within the shelf, I have all sorts of mukta things. So if I have you know, a wallet and a cell phone and a laptop computer, whatever it is, things which are very valuable. You know, and next to it is, uh, I don't know, a napkin, so which is a Davar Mutar. So that's not, that's not going to be so helpful because it's uh, the object which is a Davar Sora is going to be much more valuable and much more important. Okay, but, but these are some of the discussions that relates to Mutzah. But again, part of the one of the understandings is that again we're dealing with a case of tarovet. Whenever we have a mixture, we have majority and minority. We go by the majority. So where I have now this bowl which has the psolet, which is murubela ocher. If it's majority of psolet, psolet which is muktzer. Okay, so never mind borer. But I'm not going to be able to lift the thing up in the first place. So that's the question. It says, uh, right, let, let, let's read again from the top of the Gemara. Tanya Amara Ban Gamliel. That which Ben Hillel said that you can borrow a kadal you can take the psolet, that's when it is a majority of food. I thought psolet morabela ochel, but if you have more of this waste than of the food itself, so then, then everybody agrees, not like Ben Hillel said in the Mishnah, because they weren't talking about that case, but everybody agrees in that case, you can take the food. You have to take the food and you leave the psolet behind. But says the Gemara, I don't understand. Psolet morbela ochel mi command shali. Who says where I have majority psolet, so the whole thing is muktzah. I can't take the food. I can't take anything. I can't touch the thing. I can touch it. I can't move it. Okay. So mi command shali. So once the Gemara lotzricha again, the phrase lotzricha over here. This is a somewhat unusual, unusual usage of the phrase. Um, but it's saying it, it, it's used for the case, the following case. When we say that there is a case of psolet murbeala ochel, we don't mean to say that there is more psolet than ochel in the container, because that, as we say, that would be that would, that's correct. That would be muktza. However, the case is when I say psolet murbeala ochel, what we mean to say is nafish patircha, that it's more. Torah, that, that, that it's greater qualitatively and not quantitatively. In other words, it's going to be much uh, harder to separate the uh, to separate that that, that uh, psolet, even though it's uh, it's a zutar b'shu'ura, even though there is there is less of it. Generally speaking, we'd say right, whatever item is there is in a smaller quantity. It's easier to remove the smaller quantity. Okay. Yeah, we're saying even though it's a smaller quantity, it's more difficult to remove it, and therefore you need to remove the ochel itself. Have a look at Rashi. Rashi says, "What do we mean the nafish patircha? Why is it going to be harder to take this, uh, separate this away?" He says, "Sheyesh no dak." For example, it's very, very thin. Uh, and this is what it means to say. Okay, not that there is more. Uh, not that there is more qualitatively of one or the other, but it means that when the Torah of the Ochel is more bad absolute, when even though there's more food there, but it's going to be harder to remove the food, the that's the case where Beit Hillel is talking about when they say that you can remove the Psolet because that's even that's less of a Tircha. 
אבל הם תורח הפסולת מרבה השנה אוכל דברי הכל. אבל אם from moving the פסולת is going to be more of a תרחה, even as less of it, so then everybody agrees, including Ben Hillel, that you would separate the אוכל. אוקיי. So then we have the case of Rabban, uh, uh, Rabban Gamliel, right, of Afmadiyach Vesholet. So now says the Gemara, Rabban Gamliel Amar Afmadiyach Vesholet, Tanya. Amar Rabbi Elazar Bar Tzadok, Kach Ha'am Minagan Shobet Rabban Gamliel. Sh'ayu Mavin Dli Malay Adashim, Umitzifin Alav Maim, Finimtza Ochel Amata Upsolet Lemala. So th- this is the case, this is what they would do, they would have a bucket. of, uh, of uh, lentils or a different type of uh, kidney, whatever it was, and they would place water on top of it, right? And then all the, the food would go to the bottom, and the psolet, the waste, would come to the top, and then you could strain that off. Now, um, that seems to indicate the opposite of Rav HaTanya Ibcha, How we learned the opposite, which is, as Rashi, Ipcha, Ocha Lamala, Upsolat Lamata, meaning what's going to happen when you rinse off the, when you wash this food, is the, uh, is the, the food going to come to the top, or is the waste going to come to the top? Well, the answer is, it depends. It says, Lo Kasha, Hab Afra, Hab Gili, meaning it depends what the waste is. If it's covered in dirt, that's, then the dirt is going to be uh, heavier, And the dirt is going to go to the bottom. Afra le mata min ha'ochel, says Rashi. But if it's gile, if it's, uh, you know, it's been covered in straw, whatever it is, ka, says Rashi, kash le mala min ha'ochel, um, then that's going to go to the top and the food's going to go to the bottom. Just say in this, uh, in this context, you know, nowadays we are quite fortunate in that the way that our food comes is generally a lot cleaner than it was, than it was back then. You know, you go buy in the shops and even with, all the different uh, requirements for checking kitniot, uh, et cetera, and the things that we have to do, generally speaking, the situation is much, much, much better than it used to be. I heard a few years ago from an, somebody who's an expert in kashrut and goes around to warehouses and things. He says that the quality, the, the, the levels of infestation in uh, warehouses and kitniot and all these things is, is exponentially lower than it, than it used to be. And uh, obviously, we still have to check and still have to be careful, but it's much, much better than that. One thing which comes up from here, as well as Sugya, Igor Moshe, Rav Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva about it, uh, on the topic of placing food in water and washing, etc., is washing vegetables, washing fruits and vegetables on uh, on Shabbat before you want to eat them. Would that would that constitute the prohibition of borer? As we've seen, according to this, on Yom Tov, there's no question. But on Shabbat... So the answer is no. He writes there that if you wash, you know, you have uh, sometimes cucumbers or whatever, and has a bit of dirt on the outside, you want to wash it, or even if you place it in water in order to wash, he says that is part of the derech achila. That's not considered brera. That would not be uh, that would not be uh, uh, an issue over there. Okay, let's just see the next mishnah. It's the next mishnah, and they will call it a day. So the mishnah says another. We'll continue the machlokot. between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel. It's interesting, the third Mishnah, which we'll get to next week, but Zerat Hashem, does not say whether it's Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, and there is an interesting discussion amongst the Rishonim, whether that Mishnah is also subject to Machloket, or that is according to everybody. But in the meantime, let's just keep you in suspense. In the meantime, our Mishnah says like this, Beit Shammai omrim, Ein Meshachim beyom tov el amanot, U Beit Hillel omrim Meshachim beyma chaya veof, Bein chayin, bein shkotin, משכין יינות שמנים וסלטות וקדניות, אבל לא תבואה. רבי שמעון מתיר בתבואה. אוקיי, so this Mishnah is dealing with sending, sending gifts on Yom Tov. What gifts are we allowed to send or what are we not allowed to send? Again, presumably this is related to תרחה, תרחה שלא לצורך. Right, Rashi says, yeah, אין משכין דורון יש לרעהו. A gift from one person to the other. Uh, so Beit Shammai says, You cannot send, if you want to send gifts, you have to send manot. You have to send portions. What are manot? The word is familiar to us from Mishloach Manot, Ishlarayhu, right? On Purim, where we send Mishloach Manot. But portions, what it means here is that you're sending a food which is already prepared, which is already uh, fit to be eaten. It says Rashi, Ela Manot. Davar Muchan, something which is ready. And that's the point. It's ready. It's fit for eating now. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to leave for tomorrow. You go to somebody's house for Yom Tov. 
You bring them a box of chocolates or you bring them a fruit platter. So, you know, they'll open it up, they'll open it up and they'll eat it now. You bring them a, uh, a raw piece of meat. So, I don't know, they're gonna, they'll probably look at you funny. But aside from that, they have to have to go and they have to cook it. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, maybe it won't be for Yom Tov. So, so in the end, it was all Shalom Torah. So Beit Shammai says, you have to send them something that uh, they're going to use today. You won't leave it over for tomorrow. Okay, so these are examples of uh, manot. You have these pieces of meat. I don't know, maybe this is a proof that Rashi had built on. Right, these pieces of meat which are which are cut and uh, placed before guests or dagim, fish, etc. However, that's what you can send. Um, but other things which are not anything which is not ready, no. Now, Beit Hillel say, no. You send animals, you send birds, whether they're alive, whether they've been shechted. You can send wines and oils and flour. The only thing that Beit Hillel says no is grains. And Rabbi Shimon Matir Batsvan, Rabbi Shimon allows even that. So why not? Says Rashi. Okay. Beit Shammai says anything that's already ready now. But Hillel says, it doesn't have to be ready now, but you could do it. You send them an animal, they could check the animal, and they could consult it, and they could eat it on Yom Tov. So fine. So they, 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 you can use it. You send them a piece of meat, they could cook it, fine. But uh, when it comes to tvua, grain, he says, a narrow ya yom. that is not for today. She ain't tochanim be Yom Tov, because on Yom Tov we can't grind it. She ain't tochanim tomorrow, lot of time, you should have ground it yesterday. And therefore you're not allowed. Now Rabbi Shimon Matir Betvoa says Rashi Shema Yivashlim Bekdera Vikachem Beg Mechteshet Ketana. We saw there is a way in a Mechteshet Ketana of uh, of uh, uh, crushing the grain, and therefore Rabbi Shimon allows that. Okay, Adkan, we'll pick it up uh, from there next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.